guys, welcome back to Empower In. My name is Caroline Porter Thomas. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel, Empower In. So in this video, we're going to go over a disease process that is known as acute renal failure. Notice that I've already done a video on chronic renal failure, so this is just to go over the acute side of renal failure. Also, another change in this video is I'm not gonna do NCLEX style questions at the end. I feel like I'm rushing too much, and the pathophysiology in and of itself is a lot to cover in one video. What we're gonna do instead is we're gonna have full videos going over one question at a time, which sounds like it wouldn't be enough information, but believe me, with NCLEX style questions, when you're answering one question, you're essentially answering many different questions within that one question. So you'll thank me for it later, I promise you, when you see the videos. So please make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you get immediate updates. And also, if you want really fast updates, you can join my email list, which I will put the link below. And I send out an email every time I have a new video. So without any further ado, let's get started and let's go over acute renal failure. Acute renal failure. Humans have two kidneys, one on each side of the spine, in the area below the rib cage. They are bean-shaped, each of them measuring approximately the size of a fist. Kidneys are organisms responsible for the filtration of blood and the removal of extra water and waste from the bloodstream through urine. They filter about 120 to 150 quarts of blood per day, producing about one to two quarts of urine every day. Kidneys play an important role in the normal functioning of the body by maintaining the consistency and composition of the blood. The main functions of the kidneys include reabsorption of essential substances, removing extra fluids and waste from the blood and body as urine via the bladder. They also maintain the concentration of electrolytes such as potassium, sodium, and phosphate. The kidneys also produce hormones that strengthen the bones, maintain blood pressure, and make red blood cells. Acute renal failure, which you will see abbreviated as ARF, and is also known as acute kidney failure and acute kidney injury, is a condition in which the kidney stops functioning all of a sudden. It can take a few hours or a few days to develop. In acute renal failure, the kidney fails to filter out the blood and remove the daily load of toxins out of the bloodstream through the urine. This leads to the accumulation of waste inside the body and disturbs the balance and concentration of chemical substance in the body, which is very damaging. Acute renal failure patients are categorized into two different groups. Depending on the amount of urine produced over a 24 hour period. Patients can be either oliguric or non oliguric. Oliguric means that they produce less than 500 milliliters of urine per day, while non oliguric means that they produce more than 500 milliliters of urine per day. Although non oliguric patients produce a large amount of urine, but it contains very little waste products as the kidney hasn't filtered out the blood properly. Risk factors. Risk factors for developing acute renal failure include the presence of a chronic disease like kidney disease, diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, or liver disease, blockage of the vessels in the legs or arms, and or peripheral artery disease. Other causes can include bleeding, dehydration, increase in age, usually ages 65 and above, the usage of ACE inhibitors, overuse of certain over-the-counter painkillers such as NSAIDs like Advil and ibuprofen, and naproxen, causes. There are three sites in the renal system that can get affected, causing abrupt renal failure. They are pre-renal, intrinsic, and post-renal. Pre-renal means before the blood enters the kidney. Intrinsic means within the kidney, and post-renal sites are where the urine leaves the kidney and enters the ureters. Pre-renal. If this part is affected, the kidneys do not receive enough blood to filter. The reasons can be, dehydration due to diarrhea, vomiting, loss of blood or water pills, disruption of the blood flow to the kidneys due to various other reasons such as narrowing or blockaging of the blood vessel carrying the blood to the kidneys, serious injuries or burns, severe decreases in blood pressure after surgery involving blood loss, or bloodstream infections, especially sepsis, which can cause abnormal relaxation of the blood vessels and thus not enough pressure to bring blood to the kidneys. Also, liver failure, which can bring about hormonal changes that affect the pressure and flow of blood to the kidneys. Heart failure or heart attacks causing low blood flow. In pre-renal failure, the problem does not lie in the kidneys and they remain unaffected in the early stages. However, if the condition persists, they can damage the kidney tissue permanently due to low blood flow in the kidneys. Intrinsic. 
In intrinsic kidney failure, the problem lies in the kidney itself, due to which the process of filtration becomes faulty or ineffective. It can be a problem in the renal tissues handling salt and water processing, or it can be an issue in the supply of blood within the kidneys. These problems can arrive due to glomerulonephritis, which is an inflammation of the initial filtration system in the kidney, the glomeruli, acute tubular necrosis, in which the tubule cells stop functioning and eventually die. Most of the filtration process occurs in these tubules inside the kidneys. Acute interstitial nephritis is another cause. This means inflammation of the interstitial renal tissue, which is responsible for salt and water processing mainly. Injuries to renal tissue and cells can also be a cause. Also, blood clots within the blood vessel within the kidney can obstruct blood flow, and chronic changes can also be caused by blood vessel disease. And finally, polycystic kidney disease. It is a genetic disorder in which numerous cysts grow in the kidneys. Post-renal. Post-renal failure includes the issues with movement of the urine from the kidneys to the ureters. The problem can be caused by blockage in the way of the urine being excreted by the kidneys. Thus, it is also known as obstructive renal failure. Obstruction in the ureters can be caused by a kidney stone, cancer or tumor in the kidney or in the urinary tract organs, or structures near the urinary tract that may block the discharge of urine, and also some medications. Obstruction in the bladder can be caused by bladder stone, bladder cancer, enlarged prostate, blood clot, and finally a neurologic disorder of the bladder, which leaves it unable to contract. With appropriate treatment, the condition can be reversed. However, if the blockage persists for too long, it can damage the renal tissues and cells. Signs and Symptoms Signs and symptoms of acute renal failure may vary depending on the type and the site of the dysfunction. In most patients, there are no prominent symptoms, but generally the signs and symptoms of the condition can include changes in urination, such as little or no urine at all, or excessive urination at night, vomiting or nausea that can last for days, fatigue, a slow sluggish movement, hand tremors, prolonged bleeding, bloody stools, nosebleeds, high blood pressure, shortness of breath, breath odor and a metallic taste in the mouth, reduced appetite, non-stop hiccups, flank pain between the hips and the ribs, and swelling caused by the accumulation of water in the body, also bruising easily, and seizures can occur. Diagnostic test. In case of medical manifestations of acute renal failure, the patient is suspected to have the condition may have to go through certain diagnostic tests and procedures to verify the presence of acute renal failure. These diagnostic tests can include a urine test, which is also known as a urinalysis. It is used to detect abnormalities that can indicate renal failure. Urine output may also be measured. It helps find out the cause of the renal failure because of the amount of urine that's produced over a 24 hour period. Blood tests are also used. It can be used to detect the increasing levels of creatinine and BUN. The concentration of these substances can be used to analyze renal activity. For example, Normal BUN and creatinine levels range from a normal BUN level from 6 to 20 depending on gender and a normal creatinine of 6 to 1.2 depending on gender. An easy way to track this is to use the symbol key which you can see a video right here and also below in the description section. In some cases, a kidney biopsy may be necessary. This is when an extraction of renal tissue is taken which is done by insertion of a needle in the kidney through the skin. This will be analyzed by a specialist. Imaging tests can also be used, which are used to see the kidneys and include an ultrasound, CT scan, and MRIs. Management. As of now, there are no particular medications to cure acute renal failure, so mainly the treatment is supportive in which the objective goal is to regain normal renal function. The management of the patient varies depending on the type and site of dysfunction. Normally, the treatment aims to eliminate factors causing the dysfunction, while carefully monitoring the electrolyte and fluid balance and correcting hemodynamic status with the right fluid therapy. Treatments suggested to avoid complications include dialysis. Dialysis is the process that removes toxins from the blood, 
while allowing the kidneys to heal for the removal of excess water and accumulated toxins from the bloodstream. Temporary hemodialysis may be necessary. It is also used to remove excess potassium. Dialysis is done by pumping blood out of the body with help of the machine, which is then pumped through a dialyzer that works as an artificial kidney. The dialyzer filters the blood and removes waste, after which the blood is returned to the body. Diet modifications. In order to control the accumulation of toxins that are normally filtered out by the kidney, the doctor may limit the amount of certain foods and liquids. Your patient therefore may be placed on a high carbohydrate and low protein, low salt, and low potassium diet. Other treatments can include medications to restore the level of calcium in the blood in case of a drastic drop in blood calcium level. In case of a drastic drop in blood calcium level, the patient may have an infusion of calcium ordered. Medications to maintain the level of potassium in the blood. When the kidneys fail to remove potassium from the blood, a doctor may order substances such as glucose, calcium, or another medication called k in order to remove the excessive buildup of potassium in the bloodstream. Excess of potassium can result in weakening of the muscles and irregular heartbeats or arrhythmias, which can be dangerous. A trick to remember this medication is by saying the name of the medication out loud, which sounds to me like K-exit or k exhalate which means potassium is exiting. <laughs> and finally, treatments to regulate the amount of fluid in the blood. In cases of hypovolemia, which means low blood volume, there is found to be inadequate fluids. These fluids can be administered intravenously. Sometimes acute renal failure can also lead to excess fluids resulting in swollen hands and feet. In this case, your doctor may order a diuretic that causes the body to expel the excess fluid. Prognosis. Reversal of kidney failure depends on the cause of the disease. Full recovery is possible in the case where the disease does not originate from the kidneys and renal tissues are unaffected. If the dysfunction is not correlated completely, the patient may recover only partially. Generally, the after effects depend on how sick the patient was in the beginning of the disease. In severe cases, acute renal failure can cause death. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. We really hope that you enjoyed this video and learned a lot about acute renal failure and the pathophysiology. Like I mentioned before, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also sign up for email updates because as we finish editing the questions, we're going to start posting the video questions with the rationale. If, however, you do have an exam coming up, make sure you go ahead and go to my website because we have the questions already typed and available there. So anyways, we can't wait to see you again soon. Love you. Bye.